we've uh, spoken a number of cl classes now about sensitivity. So I want to speak of not another very powerful aspect of this of this um, sugya of this attribute, uh, which is apologizing, Rev, um, and taking responsibility and taking the blame. Rebbe was once giving a shear, and Rebbe was quite a serious. Um, Rebbe shear was quite serious. He wouldn't even. He would say Krishna. I wouldn't. The shear would be so long. It's from the morning to the night. He would just sneak in for a few seconds during the shear, and and grab a Krishna. Rebbe was on such a level. The Rebbe was giving the shear, and suddenly he smelled a very strong aroma of garlic, and it was just repulsive to him. It was just he couldn't go on. He said, "Please, whoever." Um, ate the garlic, would they please leave the shear? Now, of course, this is like very, very um, embarrassing. In the middle of Rebbe Shear, who was so busy and so, um, so, such a great Torah personality, the author of the Mishnah, to, um, to get up and to leave the shear. So immediately, Rev Chia, um, who was not the one who had the garlic, heard this. He got up and he walked out. And when Rev Chia walked out, everybody walked out of the shear because. They didn't want to cause Rabkhiya undue embarrassment. So in fact, the person who had eaten the garlic did leave the shear, but everybody had left the shear. And um, the question is asked, so how could Rabkhiya do this? Wasn't this a, um, wasn't this a Chil Lashem that Rabkhiya was a great, such a great Torah personality to take responsibility for this? And the, um, the answer the Marshal gives is that it was so clear and he wasn't really the one who did it, that it was understood that he was only doing it to save face for the other person. But this idea of saving face is such a wonderful concept that if we are able to help people save face, it's so difficult. Sometimes we'll get into a situation where um, someone has hurt us or somebody has done something to us. This is especially true in marriage relationships. It's so easy for a husband and a wife to touch on sensitivities, right? And it's always easier for the person who's the victim, right, to apologize than the person who is the um, who is the perpetrator. And again, I'm not talking about severe verbal abuse where um, rabbinic and professional advice has to be consulted to make sure that this doesn't go on because it's an extremely destructive relationship. I'm talking about the normal things that happen from day to day like um, you said something, like it slipped your tongue. You didn't really mean to say it, but it just slipped out. And the other person was really insulted by that. Or similar type experiences that we might go through. Under such circumstances, right, it's much easier for the victim to apologize. Right, or, um, or the person who did something wrong. That's even more important. Yeah, right, You said something wrong. It was really unintentional. You really didn't mean it. Right? And it was really taken the wrong way, right? And maybe in a very, very extreme way, it was, take, it was misunderstood and misconstrued. But nonetheless, to apologize and just say, I'm sorry. You know, right? Somebody really, really hurt you and really did something wrong. And they feel that they were, in fact, the victim and not you. Right? So you can just let it ride and let um, severe... Um, severe consequences take place, like sinas chinam and machlokas and dispute, etc. Or you can say, you know what, I'm sorry, right? Even if it seems to you that the other person was completely at fault. Now, Rav Chaim Shulevitz already taught us from Korach Vadasi, he said, there'll never be another machlokas like Korach Vadasi, so says Rav Chaim Shulevitz, where one side is completely right and one side is completely wrong. After the machlokas of Korach Vadasi, that was the last time in the history of mankind where one side was completely right and one side was completely wrong. From 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 then on, yeah, it's partial. That one side is is even if it's ninety nine or one or whatever the breakdown might be, some some right and some wrong. So, um, if you're um, you feel that you were unjustly treated, something happened, and that really the other person is to blame. Well, you're only partially right, according to Rosh Hashanah because there'll never be such a machlokas where one side is completely right and one side is wrong. You're into some way wrong, and it might be more than you think. And therefore, by apologizing, and by taking the brunt of the blame, and by being the person who steps forward, right, or steps up to the plate, and is the one who makes the apology, 
This is a great person, as we said previously. Ezo Gibra Kovish is Yitzra. A person's Yitzra, a person's sense of ego and self, is telling him, right, I was wrong. I'm waiting for this person um, to come to me. And we find in the Gora Yuma that somebody was uh, Choyta, um, against, uh, I believe it was Rav, and he, um, Rav even made himself available, I might be getting the name wrong, but Rav made himself available to be the recipient of um, an apology, and it didn't come, the person unfortunately uh, passed away, but to make yourself available, and even, perhaps even more at times when it's in order, to, um, to be the one to apologize yourself, and you shouldn't feel this is not true, this is wrong, I'm going to stand up for my values, my principles, right? Many people, many, many great and not great people have succumbed to this concept of principles. And again, as Rizal Pliskin said, if you can't put it, Rabbi Rizal Pliskin said, if you can't put a wheelbarrow, it doesn't exist. But are these principles, are they really worth it? Are these principles really worth it to, to make ourselves miserable? to destroy our relationships. And a lot of times, and most things that people do to us are unintentional. They came because they didn't think. They came because they didn't sufficiently um, spend time to contemplate the um, severity of what's really um, of what's really going on and of what was being coming out of their mouth. Right? As, um, as one Chacham um, said once, I believe it was um, Arashim and Schwab, right? He said, um, this is glad kosher and glad yosher. We should be equally concerned about what comes out of our mouth as we come, what comes into our mouth. People get very, very nervous when it comes to kashas, right? Is it this hector? Is it that hector? Is this, right? That's what's coming in. What about what's coming out? We should be very, very careful about that as well. And to make sure that what comes out of our mouth is glad, glad yosher and takes, as the Rabbi Shkayim says, shmir salash, right? Nitzora l'shon tamira. Nitzira, says the Gra, is a very intense guarding. Right? So whatever crosses the threshold um, is not l'shon hara, it's not sheker, it's not chanufa, it's not flattery, it's not on ostvarm, it's not hurting people with words. But to be extremely, extremely careful. But what happens if we weren't and something slipped out and it shouldn't have? Right? To immediately apologize and to, um, and to try to rectify that. Yeah? And if we and if we see that if someone else did it, yeah, someone else was the person who hurt us, right? And they're just not able to do it, right? They're just not able to recognize the mistake that they made, and to um, and to um, and to apologize for what they did to help them, to help them to apologize, and we should be the ones to take the first step and to repair the relationship by. Um, by like we, like Rav Chia did by taking responsibility for what um, what went wrong, and it's not easy. It's really not easy because we have, our principles are telling us um, that we wait for the other person, but we might be waiting a very very long time. Right? In general, people feel that they're right and that the other person is wrong. This is natural human tendency. So, if we're waiting for the other person to apologize, we might. Um, we might uh, be waiting a very, very long time. I mentioned in a previous class that there was somebody once who hurt me very, very much, and I waited for the apology. And then in the end, I um, got very upset, and I said, I need a 300 times in Malchasina Skinu Beno. The end of that story was is that um, I paid a certain counselor uh, $500 to speak to this person. And after they finished, they said, wow, I didn't realize that that's what I did. They just weren't aware of the severity of the um of what they had done and they needed to hear it from somebody else uh and in a different framework which is often which is often uh which is often the case which is often the case because uh, we are very very small today and we see things in a very small way and uh sometimes it's just a question of involving somebody else to explain in a different way and being able to make that twist to see things in a different light. Hashem should give us the greatest yad, the Shemaya in all areas of all relationships that we are engaged in to um, to be have the ability be sensitive to other people and to um, to 
apologize when the other person can't apologize, to find, to dig deep down inside ourselves and find that inner strength which can help us to um, to be better Jews and to be better people. Amen. Kain Tirotzah.